itself, it is a psalm of David, and it talks about uh, the gaining godly wisdom, and that is what I want to touch your hearts to in, in only eight verses that I want to. In these portions, there are two things that is said about good people and bad people. And they, it, it, the, the two things that is said about the godly is what they sow and what they reap. And the bad things, or, or the things about the godless people is also what they sow and what they reap. And so David shares some godly wisdom in terms of people of God that are godly and those that are away from God that is ungodly, that is lessons that we can take in the first eight verses and that's all what I'm going to touch on this morning. So many people see things the way they are and they say, why? And there are some people, just like I say, a cup you can see is half full and half empty. Some people say, why does these things happen? And some people say, why not? That these people say that this happened. So in verse 1, when we read, it says, Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the work of the iniquity. The first lesson that David wants to teach each and every one of us is, fret not. And I think this will go into the message that Brother James is going to bring later on. See, fret is something that eats at you, makes you weary, and, and, and makes us to suffer emotionally, to slowly veer away. And that is what fear is all about. See, the, the tenth, among the ten good things that can happen with fear is what? High blood pressure, heart disease, and, and, and hardening of the arteries, all these things can happen with what? Fear. And worry is being focused on yesterday's problems than carrying a heavy burden today about what could happen tomorrow. A man heard that one out of four people will have cancer. He studied and saw how prevalent the killer cancer can be. For 20 years, he worried about cancer every day. And cancer became a huge worry to him. Guess what? He died as a young man of a heart attack attributed to worry. Did you hear about a man that was so worried about everything? He had so much to worry about. He kept notes several weeks out about something he did not have time to worry about today. That way he could remember to worry about the facts later. See, Luke chapter 21, verse 26, it says, Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectations of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Dear brothers and sisters, fear or fret will only carry us to the grave rather than carry us into the heavenlies. The first lesson that David wants to teach us is do not fret. Number two, verse three Chapter 37, verse 3, it says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Number two is, trust do God and do good. A trust means believing something good, honest and effective, that thinks is coming, a blessed assurance or a total reliance on it. See, I, our enemy knows about, honestly, seeds. One seed our enemy plants often in the hearts of the people is the seed of discouragement. And that is why the word of God clearly says, trust in the Lord and do good. Make sure that those evil seeds will not grow in our heart. And we will always be understanding, trusting on him will take things away. Especially in the context of what we have gone through this week. One thing that we need to understand, discouragement, depression can never thrive in a heart that is full of trust and faith. Praise kills Satan's seeds. Trust the facts that faith will be tested and tried. And trust me on this one, this week our, our, our hearts are filled with sorrow. And our things that have, could have gone wrong have gone wrong. But let me tell you this, trusting in the Lord still makes us to grow in him. If brother has Joseph, that is the one among the 11 sons of Jacob, if he would not have been in the pit and in the prison, he would never have found his dream in the palace. Understand that 
trusting in the Lord, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what those people did to him, his brothers did to him, or the people that were with him that he considered friends in the prison did to him, he still trusted in the Lord. And what happened? He ended up in the palace. But without that pit, that palace would not have happened. Number three, in verse four, it says like this, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. The Lord wants us to delight in him and delight means strong feeling of satisfaction and pleasure, something that makes you happy or joy or triumph. So one thing that I say to, you know, there are people that always are emotional and crying over little things, I always say, Quit crying and make sure that joy abounds in your heart. Because if you start crying, what happens is even the problems that is minuscule will start to expand and become big. Nehemiah 8 verse 10, 8 verse 10 it says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portion to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah is talking to people that are discouraged or they are going through their, 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 their things in their di daily life that they are not encouraged about. He says, do not sorrow for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is an outward manifestation of the presence of a holy God. And then last but not least, verse 5. It says like this, commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Find commitment as a love offering unto God. Find commitment as a love offering unto God. To place your trust and put in charge, keep for safekeeping, to pledge, accept the assignment to find your purpose and have confidence in him. Dear brothers and sisters, when we commit ourselves into him as a love offering unto him, just like a husband and a wife, commits themselves unto the Lord, no matter what the circumstances is, unto, unto, the, uh, unto each other uh, as if unto the Lord, what happens is their love, their joy, and their, 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 their desire for each other and to the Lord increases and they build up in Him. So four things that I said this morning, and I will end. There are many more things to say, but this morning I just wanted to end it here. It says, fret not, do not be afraid. Number two, Trust, good, uh, trust God and do good. Number three, it is delight in God's plan because he works everything for good, those who love him and is called according to his purpose. And number four, find godly commitment as a love. In today's day and age, that commitment is a rarity to find. You know, people get away from each other, especially families get away from each other for petty reasons. But when we commit ourselves to each other, as if your commitment unto God. God is going to honor you, restore you, build you. And as together, as family and families of God, we would be able to see what the hope that is kept for us when Christ comes back, that he will take us back home. Until then, be rooted in him. Commit yourself to him. Enjoy his presence. And may God bless us together.